At first glance, Farshana camp is pretty much what you'd expect. The women spend hours hauling water. The children play a lot of soccer, and if they're lucky, go to school. Once a month, there's a food distribution. But mostly, you see people sitting under trees and assume there's nothing much to do. You don't realize that behind the scenes, almost everyone is working frantically because you can't survive inside the camp without some form of extra cash. <laughs> if your goal is to make money, selling stuff is the way to go. You have a captive audience of 20,000. No matter how poor they are, they still need shoes and children's clothes, soap and toothpaste and candy. Though if they can't afford the commercial version, they can buy the local brand. Wedding dresses and cheaper ones for daily use. Even the occasional luxuries like noodles, pencils and tea. There's local honey in those soda bottles and toothbrushes, either imported or the poor man's brand. The problem is, you need money to buy your merchandise, and most refugees arrive at the camp without a lot of cash. A few have managed to pull money from their extended family and use it to open up their own store. Mohammed sells everything from batteries to bubble gum. He learned the trade by working in an older brother's shop before the war. By now he saved enough to hire a truck and orders his supplies from Abeche town, three hours away. His sons do all the heavy lifting. Mohammed just shows up to keep an eye on things. He mostly sells to other storekeepers, so he no longer has to sit inside his shop and wait for customers to come to him. The extra cash has allowed him to try his hand at other businesses, like money changing, and focus on growing his family. With more money, he can buy more wives. At 52, he just married for the third time. He has to build a house and cover living expenses for each and every wife. In fact, this is just another long-term investment. More wives mean more children, and kids are the unpaid workforce that run Mohammed's growing empire. This son squeezes fresh tamarind juice each day and takes it to the local market, seven kilometers outside of camp. In Sudanese society, wealth comes with responsibility. Mohammed not only provides for his immediate family, but also sisters, cousins, and aunts. He has over 50 mouths to feed. And when friends drop by, he's expected to take care of them as well. But Mohammed's well respected in the community. When there's a meeting, people listen when he speaks. In this society, that's worth almost anything. <laughs>